Get ready to match the stars from the love boat, Fred Grandy, Brett Summer, Charles Nelson Raleigh, Phyllis Diller, Bill Daly, and Deborah Lee Scott. As we play the star-studded big money match game PM. And now, here's the star of match game PM, Gene Raven. Thank you for joining us here at Match Game PM. If it isn't a little Lord Fauntleroy. Thank you. Cute, isn't he? Yeah, he looks Very like cute. Like all my clothes from Ringling Brothers. No. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's get on with it. Me, Beverly Janae and John Moore. <laughs> Welcome to both of you. We're very friendly here, and we hope you are. And let's get acquainted by finding out where you're from, a little bit about, about your life, John. Well, I'm originally from Dallas, Texas. Now I live in by the beach in Play Delray, California. I'm uh, 31, and I'm recently retired. <laughs> I, uh, I recommend it very highly, especially to anybody you who's your... still working. You what? I recommend it very highly, especially to anybody who's still working. Yeah, you mean you don't work? Um, I work on scuba diving, uh, suntan, Are we independently wealthy? Uh, independently. I recently sold my business to my business partner for more than it was worth. Ah. <laughs> and now let's find out about Beverly. I'm a displaced New Yorker, originally from. I'm single and I drive a bus at LAX. Close. No kidding. Hmm? Is that interesting? You meet a lot of nice people? Oh, yeah. All kind of nice people. All kind of nice drunks and all kind of nice people. <laughs> <laughs> Big all right. tippers. Here on Match Game PM, you'll each have three opportunities to match as many of our stars as you possibly can. The one who's done that most often at the end of the third round will be declared the winner, and that person will go on to play the big money super match, which can pay off over $20,000. Here we go. John, you want A or B? A, please. John says he wants A. A says, oh, yeah. Tina said, the strangest thing happened. After eight years of analysis, my husband finally came out of his shell. Was I shocked? I found out he's a blank. <laughs> Eight years of analysis, he came out of his shell. All right, here we go, John. Tina said, the strangest thing happened. After eight years of analysis, my husband finally came out of his shell. Was I shocked? I found out he's a blank. A she. A she. A she. A what? Uh-huh. You see, uh, I pointed John, out very carefully John, over here. John. The operative words were, uh, came out of his shell. shell. Remember that? Turtle. <laughs> yes. Now, okay, Fred. See, if you were still working, your mind would be alive and you'd be able to... <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's fine. Want to see a cute answer that matches my bow tie? A muscle man! Muscle man! <laughs> That's wonderful. Uh, That's a wonderful answer. You don't know what muscles are. They're delicious. Yeah, Crustaceans. They come in shells. Crustaceans, right they Nobody come in a shell. Oh, right. Uh, my arm. It's a lousy no muscle there. All right, I Brett. believe this is going to be a popular fave, to be perfectly frank. He came out of his clam. Out of his clam. <laughs> I found out he's a clam. That, that is, that's a very good answer. That's a shell, yeah. a clam. So far, we've had two good responses. The Thank only bad you. one is came from old John Moore there. Then. <laughs> what do you say? I'm not playing. <laughs> I'm not playing, he said. I'm not breath. playing. Why aren't you playing? Because there's an R in the month. Oh, all right. <laughs> well, we'll go on okay, let's go on. Oh, Donald. Well, well, there's I, only uh, one right answer. Yeah. Of course I have it. What do you I say? do have okay. an answer, Uncle Jane. Oh, you do have an answer. Oh, oh of course you do. Sorry. Does. Remember me, old Lord <laughs> Fauntleroy? <laughs> I found out he's a crab. That's a little right. play on words, Uncle Jim. I do understand the play on words. I'm glossing over it very rapidly. Uh, eight years of analysis. Husband finally came out of his shell. Was I shocked? I found out he is a... a and here's the answer, because uh, he had the personality of a dial tone. <laughs> he's a boar. A boar! Uh, they zapped you on that How one. How quickly they turn. They do. You got two crabs here. Sorry about that. One crab? All right, a crab from Charles, a crab from Bill. What do you got there? Uh -huh. I, Wouldn't you like to know? Have you um, <laughs> I got a clear day. Right <laughs> on a clear day, I can see what you got. <laughs> he makes me laugh. No, how? Um, I said slug. A slug. Cows, slug That's cows. another crustacean. It's yeah. <sighs> Anything in the crustacean family would have been acceptable here. Something comes out of a shell, lobster, crabs, clams, oysters, all that stuff. Ready, Beverly? Ready. 
Dumb Dora is really dumb. She thought the movie Strange Interlude was about a romance between Marie Osmond and Blank. <laughs> now use your creative imaginations on this one. Dumb Dora is really dumb. She thought the movie Strange... <laughs> she thought the movie Strange Interlude was about a romance between Marie Osmond and... Oh, this is going to be Stranger. Uh, the Pope? The Pope. The Pope? <laughs> Well, I knew she was well-connected, but... Uh, all right, Fred, get this one. <laughs> Romance was between Marie Osmond and the Mormon Tabernacle Choir. <laughs> no names, please. No names, please, just numbers. Oh. Okay, tenors, get in line. <laughs> Oh. I have to admit, I like both those answers. Yes, I think that Beverly's was wonderful, as was his. I just said her nice brother. Her nice brother? Uh-oh. That's strange. All right. Uh, Howard <laughs> Cosell. Howard Cosell and Marie Osmond are an item. <laughs> Dumb Dora oh, thought the movie wow. Strange in the Do, the romance between Marie Osmond and... Donnie. And Donnie. We have two of those so far. Bill, what have you got? The Count Basie Band. <laughs> Strange interlude, yes. That's excellent. <laughs> All right. Yeah, pass you. Don't, don't boo him, please. I said Donnie. Ah! Donnie. Oh, well, there were four. Oh, no, no. So there's the end of round one, and uh, neither one of you has uh, matched one of our stars yet, but uh, the worst is yet to come. <laughs> Watch this, if you please. Now, since we have a tie score, and he went first last time, you will go first this time. Uh, I'll take it. All right. <laughs> Here we go. Well, <laughs> on this date in 1954, Irving Bricklemeyer became the first man ever to cross a mortician's picket line. On this same date, Mr. Bricklemeyer also became the first man ever to swallow a blank. <laughs> what? <laughs> yes. On this date in 1954, Irving Bricklemeyer became the first man ever to cross a mortician's picket line. On this same date, Mr. Bricklemeyer also became the first man ever to swallow a... Blank. Okay, a very morbid coffin. Coffin is all right. Coffin is fine. A difficult thing to do. Well, that certainly makes sense. However, I went for the easy pun and said a stiff drink. Aha! You do understand, don't you? Good. They got you. Okay. Yes. She's an awfully now? attractive woman, isn't she? Beverly. And she's smart and she's perceptive and right. she's tasteful. Uh oh. All of those things. Cast it. There it is. <laughs> An eight-foot brass candle holder with two angels with outstretched wings. <laughs> what kill you? What do you wash it down with? Embalming, Embalming fluid. fluid. <laughs> All right, Phyllis. Band First band man ever to swallow a... Band. Well, I just figured, what at a funeral uh, yes. is small Anything. enough to swallow? A lily. A lily, yeah. That's fine. Little flowers, certainly. I went for a little more painful, but the unfinished casket with the splinters and all that, but I think <laughs> that's a match. <laughs> all right, that's good for her. Hello. Hi. Hi. Go. Oh, um, coffin. There it is. Yeah. Three for Beverly. Done. Bob is the world's greatest driver. He's so great, he's the only driver in the world who can make a U-turn in a blank. He's the greatest <laughs> driver. Great. Okay, John. Bob is the world's greatest driver. He's so great, he's the only driver in the world who can make a U-turn in a... Try driveway. Driveway. All right, let's try driveway. Yeah. He said, let's try driveway. Well, you don't have to be great to make a U-turn in a driveway. You just have to be careless. That's all. I said traffic jam. A traffic That's jam. That's skill. That would be difficult to make a U-turn there. No, no, I said a U-turn in a garage. That would be difficult also. <laughs> a car wash. That would be difficult. I like that one. That's a goodie. I like that one. Car wash, excellent. Great driver, only one who can make a U-turn in A. Isn't that a terrible shame? I threw away driveway and switched to uh, Charles Nelson Riley. Car wash. All right, there are two of those. Sorry. What do you got there, Bill? U-turn and... Let's try it again. <laughs> you want me to go? U-turn and a urine. It's just hard to say, I tell you. Now, it doesn't make sense. You don't have, you don't have to understand it. That's okay. That's okay. That's all right. The mortician question... It's like a painting out there, doesn't it? It's just yeah. like a painting. Yes, Charles points out the mortician question preceded this yes, one. Boy, You're sorry. one behind. <laughs> Hello, are you a little warm there? Yes, I am. Oh. Well, I'm very hot. Yes. Um, garage. Garage, another good one. Garage is good. 
It's All a that. good answer. All right. One cup so of there we are at the end of round two. It's three to nothing. Beverly's favor, and since you're ahead, Beverly, you go first. I'll take B this time. B it is. Three people play. Rick said, you know you're too fat when people won't get on the same blank with you. <laughs> when people won't get on the same blank with you, you know you're too fat. <laughs> Maybe you want to read it. I might suggest an answer to you. Want to read it aloud? Okay. Rick said, you know you're too fat when people won't get on the same blank with you. Now, you have to put something in the blank, you see. I gotcha, I gotcha. The only thing that makes any kind of sense to me is motorcycle. Really? Anna? Anna or Anna? See, that's Anna. when she made her mistake, trying to make sense out of this game. <laughs> that's right. Oh, devil. I, I probed too deep on this one, because I thought you work at the airport, you'd drive one, you'd say one. I said, oh. but... Uh, all right, Chuck. Chuck chose Gene, and I want to congratulate all the aeronautics people watching. 747. 747, right. And Phyllis, Miss Phyllis, what did you choose? Well, you see. You know, you're too fat, we won't get on the same blank with you. Elevator. Elevator's good. Yeah. Well, we got three excellent responses there. Now, John, here's uh -huh. the way it is. You need but three you know to when talk. you're really too fat? When? When the crotch on your caftan is too tight. <laughs> <laughs> That's. John, are you ready? I'm ready. There are no crotches on caftans. Really? You have to bring your own. <laughs> Enough of this. All right. <laughs> Shall we continue? Uh-huh. Harvey said, my dentist is a crook. Yesterday, he told me that my false teeth needed blanks. <laughs> Harvey said, my dentist is a crook. Yesterday, he told me that my false teeth needed blanks. Fillings. Fillings is good. Yay! Yeah. Fillings is one good possibility. All my life is Fillings. <laughs> Fillings. Fillings. Strange thinking, pathetic dental award for this year. All right. Well, now the audience knows. No, it's very this weird. This is not a bid for sympathy, but the audience knows no. that I fell. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> she fell on her fillings. And look, I'm all swollen up there. My arm hurts and my knee is all funny. Yeah. So I said roots. Roots. <laughs> the false teeth needed roots. <laughs> well, that's all right. Every tooth, you, every tooth has a root. <laughs> Remember when she fell skating about a year ago? Yeah, Cap. Cap, another good response. John says fillings. She needs two more to achieve a tie. Phyllis, what have you got? I'm going to help John. Philly, here you two to score. Thank you, Phyllis. Bill. Fill her up with Billings. Billings! High score. Beverly, you Beverly. break the tie. Or else what happens to me? It's either it's a tie or he wins. <laughs> I'm sorry, I said caps. Caps. So the game ends in a tie, and uh, we'll tell you what happens oh! in a moment or so right after we tell you about this. Here we go. We don't have time to do our regular tiebreaker, so what we're going to do is play Sudden Death. I have one question here. I'll put it to you. You write your answers there, and then put your answers up here. I'll go over and canvas the stars, and when you hear your answer, you let me know. Good luck to both of you. Here we go. Blank cooking. Blank cooking. All right, they're finished. I'll call for verbal responses from you. Fred, how would you fill in that blank? Home cooking. Home cooking. John Moore, it was a pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. Send some gifts to you from Match Game DM. There he goes, John Moore. Congratulations and good luck to you. Terrific. Now, you could win a bundle of money here, over $20,000. To do that, we have two audience matches for you. Whatever you win will be multiplied by 10. We pulled the studio audience and said, write down your best answer to this. Blank Knox, $500 for matching the most popular. If you match second most popular, you get $250. And then for matching the third, you get $100. Three of the six stars can help. Whom do you call on? Brett. Oh, I got Hard Knox. Yeah. That's There's it. one. Okay. Uh, Phyllis. I had the same thing. Oh. Yeah, well, have you got another one? All right. Oh, you want another one? She passes, uh, unless oh, you can think I, of I one. I better pass. All right. Uh, well, Fred. Opportunity Knox. Yeah. Opportunity yeah, yeah, Knox. Yeah. All right. Charles. She didn't call on me. Oh, she didn't call on you. Uh, Charles. Don. <laughs> Don Knox. 
That's Don Knox. Okay, so you got Don Knox, Hard Knox, and Opportunity Knox. You want one of those or one of your own? I want Opportunity Knox. Opportunity. Let's see if it's under the $100 response. Door Knox is there. Opportunity, is it under the next one, please? Yes, it is. All right. What do you think is going to be under the big one? Hard. All right, slide the big hard. one. It is hard. Oh. Okay, now you've got $250. means the least you'll play for is 10 times that amount, or $2,500. But you have one more audience match, and let's see how you do with that. Here we go. Smooth as blank. Oh, easy, easy, easy. Deborah, <laughs> for the show. That's All it. Right. Um, Bill? What? <laughs> no one ever called him. Uh, oh, jeez. Wait, wait, wait. I'll, 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 I'll help you. Wait, wait, wait. I'll help you. I'll help you. I'll help you. I'll help you. Well, I wrote smooth. No, smooth as... I don't know what that means. Uh, smooth as a doorknob. No, just kidding. Uh, smooth as silk. Smooth as a whistle. No, that's not make it. Smooth as the glass. Okay, okay. Um, Brent. I know what that means. Oh, I know she was going to say that. Smooth as a... Baby's. A baby's bottom. I think I'm going to probably get up and hug. I'm a mother. Smooth as a baby's bottom, smooth as glass, smooth as silk. You want one of those or one of your own? Silk. Silk it yeah. is. Yeah. Let's take a look at the $100 response. Smooth as a baby. That's up there, yeah. Let's take a look at the next one, please. Smooth as glass. Well, you got two out of three. Let's see if silk is on top. Silk is on top. Yeah. Now you want 100 $500 here means at least we multiply by 10 is 5,000. Added to the previous 2,500 gives you a pot of $7,500 to shoot for. However, we want you to spin the wheel. If you get a lucky spin, you'll double it and you will play for $15,000. Step up there and have a go at it. Grab one of these oh, pegs. There it yeah, is. Yeah, and here we go. Let's all root for a double. $7,500 with Phyllis Diller. Face me if you would, please. But she can Good decide. luck to you. Can't she decide for herself? She's going to match you. Oh. You write your answer. When I... Ready? Here it is. Blank the flag. Oh, she's got that. Shh. Can I talk? No. no. Just put it in the slot. All right. If you match Phyllis, <laughs> you get $7,500. What do you say? Salute. Ah! What? 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 Terrific! Congratulations. Congratulations to Beverly Janae. Join us next week for Match Game PM. Gene Raven here. Thank you all. Goodbye. Some contestants Funny on TV is nearly extinct. A good comic is a rare sighting these days, so when we find one, we study it. But sometimes, we need to get closer. Here at the GSN Comics and Captivity Institute, we're like a hothouse where the funny flower can grow. Anybody from Cleveland here tonight? Anybody show him? Yeah! Game show crowds can be brutal. We're making sure these kids are ready. National Lampoon's Funny Money, a new game show featuring the best young comics in showbiz, coming up next on Game Show Network. Comedy. It's a science. Car wax, extra polymers and silicones make it extra long lasting, extra billions, extra easy turtle, extra car wax and liquid and soft face. And a fabric egg collection featuring organic shampoo and conditioner, the pure wheat German honey for fresh smelling hair with super shine, super body organics by Fabric Aid. Jens combination quartz analog LCD alarm displays either another time zone or readout of seconds and date, a dare clad case with matching bracelet. Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game PM, a Mark Goodson, Bill Totman production.